Start with a firm handshake. Firm handshake is key. It shows good confidence. Also have good posture. Also shows good confidence. There's all kinds of stuff on the internet about power poses and and this and that. But try and sit up straight. Have good eye contact. Look like a presentable person. Look like you're happy to be there. Crack a smile. It's okay. It's okay to laugh during these. It's all good. Try to act like yourself, but the best version of yourself. Okay? We're not trying to be fake, but we're trying to present the best aspects we have to offer. Now on to the questions. So this is where you have the opportunity to stand out because you are likely the only interviewee, I think it's interviewee, in the room. So this is where you set yourself apart. Keep these things in mind. Consider their point of view. What do you as a candidate have to offer? How can you, as a candidate, make their life easier? How can you make them look good? How can you make them or the company money? How will you fit in with the rest of the employees? Or will you cause friction in the workplace? We want to talk ourselves up, but we want to stay down to earth. We want to be realistic. We want to be truthful. We also want to answer uniquely, but have a good explanation. The explanation is key. Answering uniquely will set you apart, but it's the good explanation that will really emphasize emphasize what you bring to the workplace. The first question is oftentimes one of those cliche questions. I absolutely despise the cliche questions because there are so many ways to answer them. And you never know how far to go. Let's start with the stereotypical. So tell me about yourself. And really what they're asking is not when you were born, where you were born, who your parents are, and where you went to grade school. No one cares about that. Tell me about yourself is an invitation to talk briefly about your current role. Maybe your current job, your current schooling, your current role, and relevant past experiences. Keep it short. Keep it sweet. This is also a great place for an accusation audit. That's a phrase termed by Chris Voss. I believe he was the one to term it. He's a a negotiator for the FBI. Possibly retired. Long time. He's got a great book out there. But an accusation audit is where you... State the elephant in the room. So if someone is coming out of college and this is their first job or coming out of high school and this is their first job, the accusation audit would point out the fact that they do not have work experience. You can't say, oh, I've been in sales for 10 years, so I would be appropriate for this sales job. No, the accusation audit says, I'm a new graduate right? That's my current role. I'm a graduate and I do not have sales experience, but these are the things I have to offer. And then you touch on some past experiences. You can say, I had this job in high school and it set me up with these skills. And then you move on that, on that path. Because as a new graduate competing against people who have work experience, they are going to call you out on it at some point. And if you address it right away, I think it says a lot about your character. It says a lot about recognizing your weaknesses, which is the next stereotypical question, by the way. Um, so, so start with the elephant in the room. Get it out of the way. It's going to make the rest of the interview go well. They'll appreciate it. So what are your biggest weaknesses? And they really don't want you to say something that is a negative turned into a positive. My biggest weakness is I'm a perfectionist. Well, no. No, it's not. Because I think perfection is a weakness. Um, In in my current field, we operate under the assumption that better is the enemy of good. Which sounds pretty funny, but when you uh, try to fix a situation that's adequate and it goes worse, you really wish you would have just gone back to good. Um... So when they're asking about your biggest weakness, do not give a cliche answer to a cliche question. 
explain one of your weaknesses or one of your faults and then tell them how you are improving not how you plan to improve going forward tell them hey i am chronically late and you can say over the past six months i have set an additional alarm clock or i have done these things and over the last six months i have not shown up to work late one time or i have not missed a class or whatever the case may be you know my biggest weakness is i am a procrastinator and because i am a procrastinator i had to make a different schedule or i had to use a a google calendar to keep myself on track and moving forward and because i did those things i saw these results that's what they want you, that's what you want to say it's going to make you sound good there's also going to be one of the variable questions such as tell me about a time when and it could be a time when you failed, time when you made a mistake, time when you faced a challenge. What, whatever the, the, the latter end of that question is will probably relate to the position. So if it's a, if it's a position working with people, it could be, tell me about a, a time when um, you've had a confrontation with another person and, or were in a heated situation and how you handled it. Um, so, so keep some of those in mind. And, and similarly to the weakness, Speak to a, uh, a point in which you did fail, you did make a mistake, and then how you have since fixed the error of your ways, right? Really, really own your mistake, but speak to how you changed and prevented it from happening again. If you're in a sales position, you could get the stereotypical, sell me this pen. Jordan Belfort has a great video of this online. It comes down to finding value in the pen making it a necessity and a key takeaway i had from his interview was do not waste time on a non-sale so if, if you are selling the other person the pen and they're not interested you can say oh well thank you for your time and then move on to the next person because you don't waste time on a sale that's not going to happen just there's there's big lists of cliche questions take a look at them online have a few main ones picked out have some good answers. Have some good situations. Personal questions. You might be asked about your family life, your work-life balance, hobbies and interests. Keep it short. Keep it sweet. If you can, pick something that's going to make you stand out. You might get critical thinking questions. With these, you're going to want to think about potential stressful aspects of the job. Because you want to prove you can handle yourself in the position you're applying for. Again, it might be sales related. It might be IT related. It might be person to person interactions. Just think about what the job demands and they want to know you can handle the job. Oddball questions. These are good. I'm pretty sure I failed almost all of these questions in my interview. The, the first time I had one of these, I was asked, who would win in a fight, a razorback gorilla or a hammerhead shark? And I said, hmm, hmm. And then I went with gorilla because that was, that was the obvious answer. And it turns out that almost everybody else went with gorilla. So in hindsight, I should have went with shark. But you had to, had to have an explanation. And, you know, clearly the gorilla being on land has a distinct advantage. I think it also has a mobility advantage, but that's another story for another time. Also, if you were an animal, which would you be? This is another question that I completely slaughtered a few times ago. Have an animal picked out and know why you would choose that animal. Again, pick something unique. It'll sound good. They'll remember it. Something bizarre could be fun. But for all of these, all of these points, all these topics, keep it positive. Don't speak poorly of any uh, past employers, uh, past coworkers, right? So when you're talking about uh, that conflict you had previously, don't say, you know, and they're a total trash to work with and, and I dislike them and they do a terrible job. You know, not, not something we're going for because if you talk trash about the people that you previously worked with, chances are you will not speak well of your current employer or hoping to be next employer after you move on from that job. 
in the years to come. Last aspect about questions, and then we'll then we'll get away from this. You need to have questions to ask the interview panel. And there are again lists lists of cliche questions that you can ask at the end. But the one that I go to, and this is this is the one that I keep in my pocket. I say, what does my success look like in six months after I start this job? And then what does it look like five years after I start this job? Because this is, again, giving them an, an opportunity to say how my characteristics are going to apply to this position. And they're going to see me six months down the road filling the vacant shoes. In the five years, they're going to see me down the road, again, long term. It's going to be good. I also ask questions along the way if something comes up. And that's the other thing I say. I've asked any questions that I had during the interview. So at this point in time, I don't have any more questions. But I will certainly call if something comes to mind. Call, email, see what they like. You'll figure it out as you go. 